guys. So in today's video, I have another my top five uh, video style for you. Uh, and that's gonna be my top five body washes or body cleansers. This is one you guys asked for. And you all know at this point, if you've watched me for any number of years, that I'm not a big proponent of using a lot of cleansers on your body or soap on your body. Um, in general, society is obsessed with soap and overuses soap. And as a result, we have an epidemic, particularly in the winter, of xerosis cutis or dry skin. Uh, soaps have surfactants in them, which are great for removing oil and dirt, but unfortunately in doing so, they take away some of your, uh, quite a bit actually, of your skin's natural lipid barrier. And as a result, after cleansing, you lose water from the skin really easily and that leads to dry skin. And not only does it lead to dry skin, but it increases your risk of uh, superficial skin infection. So bacteria and yeast and things like that uh, coming in and, and setting up shop on the surface of your dry, uh, irritated skin. A lot of body washes and cleansers have ingredients that are common causes of allergic contact dermatitis. Fragrance is probably one of the most pervasive ingredients in body washes and bar soaps, as well as a preservative uh, called methyl isothiazolinone or also methyl chloroisothiazolinone. Those two preservatives are in a lot of uh, body washes in particular, things that are liquids that are intended to be rinsed off often have that preservative and it is a frequent cause of allergic contact dermatitis. Even in wash off forms where these allergens are not actually sitting on your skin for a prolonged period of time, they definitely can lead to sensitivity regardless. And therefore, you know, I always encourage patients and you guys to really be strategic with body washing and cleansing and try and avoid overdoing it. What, where is it advantageous to use soap on the body? In areas where you have skin on skin folds, like in the armpits, the groin, if you have abdominal folds in that area under the breasts, Using soaps and cleansers in these areas is helpful because anywhere that you have skin on skin contact, a lot of moisture, you have a more hospitable environment for yeast and uh, the bacteria that naturally live on our skin are more abundant in these areas and actually a, a different makeup than elsewhere on the body. They break down sweat and that sweat leads to odor, which you don't, don't want. So using body washes in those areas is, is helpful, but otherwise there's really no need to use a body wash on the majority of your torso, except for in fold areas. Your legs do not need body washes, particularly if you are over the age of, I would say 45. As we get older, the oils that we produce on our body, the, the amount of oil that we produce goes down and we're really more at risk for dry skin conditions. So there's definitely no reason uh, in general to be washing the skin on your legs or likewise the, the, your arms, unless of course these areas are visibly soiled. I know some of you work outdoors and you're exposed to like dust and pollutants and dirt and things like that all day. Um, in which case, yes, uh, then you, you probably wanna be a little bit more comprehensive. The other reason to use a body wash or soap is in the situation in which it is a medicated soap or cleanser used to tr treat a specific condition on the body, like acne, folliculitis, tinea versicolor, or hydradenitis suppurativa. Uh, there are medicated body washes, many of which I've talked about in videos on those skin conditions that can be used on the body to help treat those conditions. Uh, but that's not gonna be everybody. You didn't think I was just gonna jump on this video and name my top five favorite body washes and not give you guys any context. Oh no, you know that's not my style. I've got to blab for at least 20 minutes about the nuances of bathing. When it comes to cleansing, one of the things that you have to factor in mind is whether or not you're gonna use a bar soap or a liquid cleanser. Liquid cleansers offer the advantage over bar soaps in that they tend to be less drying and irritating, and they also allow the user to be a little bit more uh, conservative with the amount of cleanser that they're using. So they allow you to titrate how much lather, how much, how much of the product that you're using. As opposed to bar soaps, it's more 
um, you know, can get, it can get out of control with bar soaps. You can end up using actually a lot. So cleansers, if used strategically and, you know, you're not using a ton, like most people do, they actually can end up being more economic and reducing the amount of surfactant exposure that you're, you're putting all over your body. Bar soaps offer the advantage though in that they're obviously more environmentally friendly. And you know, traditional bar soaps, as I mentioned, were very drying and irritating. They had surfactants that were very harsh. However, newer, uh, what's called Sinbat bars, or like your beauty bar, for example, these are formulated with much more uh, gentle surfactants for removing oil and dirt, but they're also co-formulated with emollients, humectants, moisturizing ingredients that kind of help in addressing the issues surrounding cleansing and, and removing some of the natural lipid barrier. They attempt to re simultaneously replenish that. The other thing that you have to think about uh, whether you be using a bar soap or a cleanser, is how are you gonna put it on your body? There are a few ways to do this. I typically, almost always recommend people to just use their hands. And the reason for this is that uh, uh, the other alternatives, which are those little loofahs or a uh, washcloth, they can, you know, just through friction, be very aggressive on the skin barrier. So not only are you have, you not only have the surfactant on there dissolving the lipids, but now you have a mechanical force that's abrasive that further disrupts the skin barrier. So I generally advise to just use the hands. However, when it comes to using a bar soap, uh, one of the issues that you run into is that bar soaps, they get uh, a, like a film around the outside of surfactants that kind of needs to be broken up before you can generate a lather to apply to your body. And so if you're using your hands to do that, you end up getting a lot of soap on your hands and using way too much soap. Whereas if you use a washcloth to uh, initiate that lathering process, it goes much, much faster and you end up using less bar soap. So as long as you're not too intense with your scrubbing on the skin barrier, a washcloth is a great option. I prefer and recommend the washcloth over those loofah things. Yeah, the loofahs are sort of an incubator of, of grime and whatnot. And the other reason obviously to not use those is they're not great on the environment. Using a simple washcloth, however, you can reuse that. You can disinfect it in your washing, washing machine or laundry. And you know, so it's a much better option. So those are some tidbits about cleansing your body. Uh, which cleansers do I actually recommend? Number one should come as no surprise to you. It's going to be the CeraVe Hydrating Bar. This is a Sindent bar that is formulated with very gentle surfactants, but also includes petrolatum and different moisturizing ingredients. Not only is it using the gentlest surfactants possible to help in removing the dirt and sebum and oil, but it's really addressing the issues around surfactant use on your skin barrier. And then it's simultaneously depositing petrolatum to help seal in some of that trans epidermal water loss that's gonna be inevitable from cleansing. I love the CeraVe Hydrating Cleansing Bar and that is the one that I actually recommend probably most frequently. You might be asking and wondering about another bar soap that dermatologists frequently recommend and I have no issue with is the Dove Beauty Bar Fragrance Free. It's fine, I have no issue with it. It doesn't have fragrance, it doesn't have the methyl isothiazolinones like I mentioned. And it has a nice gentle surfactant. It has an isothioninate. I have a hard time spitting that out. Like CeraVe. But unlike CeraVe, it doesn't have petrolatum in it. So it really doesn't have the same uh, level of wonderful bar skin barrier addressing properties that CeraVe does. You know, I, if people say, yeah, I'm using the Dove Beauty Bar, I'm like, great, you know, that's fine. So long as it's the fragrance free one though. Dove makes like 9,000 different soaps. I'm telling you, the Unilever CEO is not hurting financially, I'm sure. But um, yeah, they, they make, the one that I'm referring to is fragrance free one. I'll list it down below along with the rest of these. That's a, you know, that's a fine, fine soap to use, but it doesn't have the petrolatum and things that, that address the skin barrier. So if somebody's using that and not having an issue with it, like I have no issue with it, but if somebody's asking me what bar soap I would recommend or what soap, I recommend CeraVe over that because of, you know, it includes petrolatum in it basically for addressing the skin barrier. The CeraVe bar soap also includes ceramides like all of their products do. I mean, that almost goes without saying. And so, you know, whether or not putting ceramides on your skin in a, in a wash or a lather is really helpful, like whether or not they work that way, I can't tell you guys. I mean, they're in there for whatever they're worth. 
Uh, the key though is the petrolatum. The way that that particular product is formulated, it will simultaneously put that petrolatum on the surface of your skin to help lock in water. Now, if you have acne prone skin and you're worried about the petrolatum, don't be. This is a non comedogenic bar soap, it will not break you out. Um, and so, you know, I actually recommend it for people with acne looking for just a, a gentle body wash. Um, because, you know, if you over dry out your skin barrier with a harsh soap or a harsh body wash, you actually can worsen the acne on your body because it causes irritation. So that's a good one just for general purposes of cleansing. CeraVe's Hydrating Body Wash is a good body wash as well to use, but um, a body wash that I also recommend is my number two recommendation. For those of you looking for a cruelty-free and vegan alternative, I love this product. It's the Ceramedics Natural Ceramide Therapy um, Body Cleanser. It is really gentle, very gentle surfactants, no added fragrance. It has sunflower seed oil in it, which has actually been shown to be very good for people with dry skin conditions and eczema. So you get that nice emolliation from this product. And it also has panthenol, a skin conditioning agent. This does a really nice job of uh, depositing nice moisturizing factors on the surface of the skin uh, while simultaneously uh, using a very gentle surfactant to remove sebum and dirt and oil. So this is my cruelty-free recommendation. I love it, I use it. I use, it on my, I use this on my face, uh, but it is marketed and intended to be used on the body, but I use it on my face as you guys have seen before, and many of you do too after watching me do that. The body wash product though that I myself actually end up using more than anything else uh, with, str with strategy behind it is the Panoxyl Acne Creamy Wash. This is a 4% benzoyl peroxide wash. This is so multi-purpose. It helps so many different skin conditions. The way that I use this is to use it as what I call an in-shower body mask in which it's lathered to the affected area that you're targeting. Again, strategy. You don't wanna put this head to toe all over your body you know, be lathering around in there with that disgusting loofah. Very strategic. You only need like a pea-sized amount of this to generate a sufficient lather to distribute it onto a, the surface of a targeted area. In my case, it's my armpits. Um, leave it in, on the targeted area for anywhere from three to seven minutes and then rinse it off in the shower. When you use benzoyl peroxide in this way, uh, the ingredient is very effective and using it this way reduces the risk of irritation from the active ingredient benzoyl peroxide. And it also uh, takes you out of the issue of the fact that benzoyl peroxide when left on the skin will bleach your fabrics. So, you know, this doesn't really require you to use a fabric, unless you're somebody who likes a washcloth, in which case use a white washcloth, because it's gonna bleach it. Um, but I just use it on my hand, I just use it on my hands. And again, you really don't need a lot, just a tiny amount. Like this will last you, last me a lo very long time. I, and I, I recommend the 4% daily control. This is a very creamy formulation. So it really does a nice job of depositing, emolliating, moisturizing factors onto the surface of the skin. So I use it in my armpits. I do this because the armpits uh, have a different bacterial makeup. And when you sweat from your armpits, axillary sweat, Ecrine sweat, it's not the same thing as oil, by the way. It's not the same thing as sebum, but ecrine sweat serves to cool the body. But the bacteria that are living up under your armpit chew that, that um, sweat up, and as a result, you have this foul-smelling odor, AKA BO. That's what people are trying to address with deodorants and whatnot. But this will help in reducing the burden of bacteria in your armpit because it is an antibacterial. So in doing so, it will cut down on the amount of bacteria in your armpit that chew up your sweat and make you stink. So for me, it's basically my deodorant. That is, that's really all that I use as, an, as a deodorant. I don't use, I don't, I don't end up needing to use deodorants or antiperspirants. That being said, I don't sweat a lot. All right, that's me. Who else is this helpful for though? A lot of people. Acne, people with acne on the body, chest, back, buttocks. This is your product right here. Do the body mask thing. It works well in helping to control acne. Um, it's not to say it's gonna cure your skin disease, but it definitely is a mainstay ingredient in acne management. The other people that this product helps a lot are people with uh, hydratinitis suppurativa because any bacteria or excess of bacteria on the surface of the skin can flare that disease. As you know, if you suffer from that condition, it tends to occur in the skin fold areas like in the armpits, under the breasts, areas where you have something called apocrine glands. These are different 
from ecrine sweat glands that cool the body and they're different from sebaceous oil glands that moisturize the surface of the skin um, and their function is not fully understood. But hydratinitis suppurativa is actually a disease of those glands and so they tend to be located as well in the armpits groin area around the buttocks and using panoxyl in those areas as a body mask can help in reducing the number of flares that you experience with that condition. This is also one that I recommend for people dealing with folliculitis, bacterial folliculitis on their body. I have a video on folliculitis, by the way, but this will help reduce the burden of staph bacteria on the surface of the skin that can contribute to that disease. The other group of people uh, kind of Related to folliculitis, but uh, not the same thing, is this other group of people that I often recommend this body wash to is going to be your athletes. Uh, high school athletes, uh, you know, collegiate athletes, those are the people I mostly see. I don't see professional athletes that often. I have seen a few. But yeah, this I recommend because uh, one of the things that can happen when you're working out in a gym is that there's a lot of bacteria that gets on the surfaces of your workout equipment and it's not uncommon for there to be outbreaks of something called uh, staph impetigo, which is a type of staph infection on the surface of the skin. Common in wrestlers, uh, you know, anybody doing anybody doing sports, team sports, where you have a gym and a locker room, uh, you know, that's a, that's a situation where staph outbreaks can happen. So using this body mask after your gym sessions, after your training sessions uh, to your skin can help in reducing the risk of of that, those bacterial infections. It can help decolonize that bacteria, essentially. Uh, not only for the athletes, but you know, I, people who have tinea versicolor, it's that skin condition that gets worse with sweating, and, and, and when your skin becomes oily, it's due to that little yeast, Malassezia furfur, or uh, Pterosporum yeast. It causes those like scaly patches that turn white, and like they take forever to go away. They finally go away, and then they come back. This will actually help. It won't necessarily treat that directly, but it will help in reducing the risk of it recurring because it helps in just kind of making your skin less hospitable to that little yeast. So it's helpful in that sense. But again, don't, you know, it's not a head to toe thing that you have to be incubating your skin in because if you do that, you will definitely get a lot of dryness and irritation. So yeah, Panoxol, I personally use it myself. It's probably the body washing product I use the most uh, to deodorize myself. Another really acne friendly cleanser, not only for the face, but it can be used on the body, is Aquanil Cleanser. You guys know I use this on my face, but you can also use it um, on body surface areas. You don't need a lot. See, most people will just dump a big blob of this out onto one of those bacterial Petri dishes, AKA a loofah, and go to town with it. You really don't need to use that much. Um, I, you know, when I use this, for example, I just use a little pea-sized amount, lather it to the my armpits, maybe another pea or two. You know, I'm really strategic with how much and where I use the cleanser. So I'm not overdoing it. I'm just cleansing those areas with, it. you really only need a small amount. Um, so yeah, I, you know, it may seem expensive to use this as a body wash, but you really don't need that much. So for me, you know, when I run out of Panoxyl, sometimes I'll use this just to cleanse those areas, uh, like in my armpits and whatnot, and I really don't end up using much. You can buy a 16 ounce bottle of this, by the way. Um, but I love it. It's uh, sodium laureth sulfate is the surfactant, which is a gentle surfactant. And it's also formulated with glycerin, which is a humectant, and a variety of a wax alcohol, acetyl alcohol, and benzyl alcohol. I've got a video on those alcohols, so check that out if you're like, alcohol? No. Uh, they're very helpful for the skin barrier. All right, last but not least, for those of you in Australia, New Zealand, and the UK, I recommend the QV, I don't have it with me because I finished it, QV Gentle Wash. This, uh, like the Aquanil, is, is actually pretty similar to the Aquanil. It has sodium laurelyl sarcosinate as a surfactant, which is very gentle. It also has glycerin, which is a humectant, and a variety of other, uh, I think it has some wax alcohols in it too, I can't quite remember. But that too is fantastic, free of, you know, like all of these, free of added fragrance and no methyl isothiazolinone. 
Uh, be careful though, I, I will definitely list that one down below, but they make another one that's just a body cleanser. It doesn't say gentle on it. That one has sodium laurel sulfate in it, which you know, you're free to use and, and try, but it can be much more drying. So I recommend the gentle wash formulation. It's much, much easier on the skin barrier. All right, those are my top five body washes, bar soaps. Honestly, they're the ones that are like most upfront in my brain and that I'm recommending the most. That's not to say that other bar soaps and body washes and cleansers that I've recommended in other videos are somehow bad and that I don't recommend. Um, this video is my top five for brevity's sake, um, and I try to make it most comprehensive, but things that I've recommended in other videos like Vanny Cream, Bar Soap, Cetaphil, Restoraderm, and uh, Eucerin Baby Wash, yeah, those are still great too, but remember it's the, just five for brevity's sake so i hope this was helpful to you guys if you liked it give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe i'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye